We got Ashley here today. I'm going to bring her in. She's from Minneapolis, and I just found out she's an amazing artist, which I love very, very much. But here she is, Ashley. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? Hello, doing good. Yay. Okay, so I'm just going to turn it over to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and kind of the things you do and then your you journey and off we go we're going to talk about habits today which yes. is fantastic yes. so take it away okay well hello everyone thank you so much for hanging out with me today i do know some of you beautiful people already but for those of you who i don't uh, my name is ashley erickson i'm 34 years old i'm married to my husband Jake. We're coming up on our two-year wedding anniversary in August. Um, and like Darren said, we live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I was actually unaware that Blair Peterson is from Minnesota as well. So that was a fun fact that I found out this week. Um, so my talk today is going to be um, based on habit building and more specifically the science behind how habits are formed, the science behind how habits really stick and how we can change out bad habits and replace them with healthy, healthy habits that will serve us, um, serve our business and serve those around us. So um, when I was asked to speak for one of these Wednesday sessions, the idea of discussing habits um, instantly came to my mind. The topic of habits, I feel like is so important to us as social sellers and as business owners. Um, tell me if you guys can relate to this, but most of us on this call don't have a traditional boss, right? We have no one making us clock in and out. We have no one telling us what to do for our daily tasks. We have no one ho holding us accountable if we get our work done. And in fact, many of you on this call um, are here because you probably already have some healthy habits in place um, that you've already built into your life and because your consistency, you've upheld those habits. So I feel like that in itself deserves a little applause. Um, but before we get too deep into things and nerd out about science, um, I just want to highlight that this little chat will discuss um, why habits are not only important to you as an affiliate seller for brands, but it's also important for us to educate our customers on good habits. So at you, obviously we promote supplements. We promote change. We promote before and after pictures. We promote healthy lifestyles, all of which cannot be created overnight. We know that. Um, you can sell a product once. To a customer but unless they have good healthy habits and they're going to take their supplement every single day it'll probably be your last sale with that customer um so and they're not going to see those those great benefits that we've promised and sold to them as well too so it's important for us to even learn how to implement teaching these healthy habits that we might already have or learning to have down teaching them to our customers so We'll dive into that, um, but let me pause. I'll tell you a little bit more about my background. Um, Darren and I just nerded out completely because we found out we were both super into oil painting and art. But um, my background is I went to college for fine arts. I specialized in oil painting. Um, and when I graduated college, I became self-employed. At the age of 23, I started a paint and sip franchise here in Minnesota. So I don't know if any of you guys have been to a paint and sip before, but it's like hosted at a bar. You drink wine with your girlfriends and someone teaches you a painting. Okay. Um, so let me know in the chat if you have been to a paint and sip before. Um, that's what I do and have been doing forever. Um, but so back when I graduated college, Paint Night was born out in Boston, Massachusetts, and the owner of that company was looking to expand nationally. So I literally took a 15 minute phone call with this owner and got hired as a 23 year old to run my own business. So I had not a clue what to do. I didn't know how to get an accountant. I didn't know how to file payroll. I didn't know how to hire and fire employees. Um, I didn't know how to keep inventory. You get the point. Um, so slowly 
and painfully, I made mistakes and learned how to fix them. And actually this past January, January 13th of 2024, I celebrated 10 years, a decade owning my business and running my business in Minnesota. So I bring that up because that journey um, of self-employment and learning how to implement healthy habits is really what led me to affiliate sales and social selling. So that's one big piece about my story. I'm an art fanatic. My favorite artist is Pablo Picasso. I'm obsessed. I'm also knowledgeable about other 18th and 19th century artists. So if you're into that, Darren was, we were like soulmate matches. Um, if you're into that, I'm your girl. Um, I'm also an only child. So let me know if you can relate to that. I'm left-handed. Um, I've been a vegetarian since the age of 10. Not for any deep reason, but I was like a weird 10 year old and I decided that enough was enough and I was a vegetarian ever since. <laughs> um, and my favorite color is orange um, because in elementary school, no one would ever pick orange as their favorite color. And it made me feel so sad for the color orange. I didn't want it to be left out. So like ever since I think second or third grade, orange and me, we have a bond. Um, so you guys tell me in the comments a random fact about yourself so we can get to know each other better. Like the weirder, the better, please. A random weird fact about you. Um, and I'll keep going here, but being self-employed my entire adult life, habits and habit formation became such an interesting topic to me. Whether it's waking up early, exercising regularly, eating healthier, habits shape our life more than we realize. So I'm gonna use three books today to um, talk about habits. They're all fantastic reads. I think Jenny wrote in the comments that Atomic Habits, oh, which side is it? Atomic Habits is one of her favorites. So we're gonna do Atomic Habits, we're gonna do um, The Power of Habit, and then I'm also gonna do um, Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. So those three books I'm gonna reference um, today, and we'll chit chat and talk about a little bit. Yes, I love that Blair says besties are, or lefties are the best. Besties are lefties. I don't know what I was trying to say. <laughs> All right, so let's start with this one. This is The Power of Habit. I feel like this one is a very like foundational book. It's largely research-based, so it's very like scientifically based, lots of studies and results of those studies. So it does sound somewhat dry and boring, but it's actually super fascinating. Um, so the first thing you should understand about a habit, hopefully you can see here, I love a visual. I'm an art major, um, is that he explains that habits have a loop. It's called a habit loop, and it consists of a cue, a routine, and a reward. So the cue is what triggers the habit. The routine is the habit or action itself, and the reward is what reinforces that loop or that habit to repeat itself over and over and over again. So for example, my cue is I'm watching TV and I get bored. I lose interest, okay? My habit is then to grab my phone and I automatically open TikTok, right? And my reward is I scroll and I'm entertained every one second by a new funny video, right? So I'm craving that instant satisfaction and TikTok gives it to me. So when you're looking to create a new habit, you have to start by identifying the cue. That's the very top thing in your habit loop. You have to figure out what triggers your good, or in my case, bad habit, and then experiment with different routines that can fulfill that same desired cue, okay? So that trigger, here's the catch, that reward in the end has to feel as satisfying to you as the bad habit that you're trying to break. So in my case, I'm trying to break my boredom when I'm watching TV. I want something that entertains me quickly, right? So for my first example, my brain is half rotted on TikTok so often, right? I'd like to change that. I don't want to be addicted to TikTok like I am. So if that's something I want to change, the cue is getting bored while watching TV and grabbing my phone. A replacement habit could really be anything, but for me, I love Italy, you guys. I'm obsessed. My husband and I have a goal of living in Italy one day. It's like our biggest dream, biggest goal ever. So that would be a reward for me. Instead of opening my TikTok app, 
When I'm bored, I could grab my phone and I could open my Duolingo app and I could do an Italian lesson, right? If I'm bored, that would definitely stimulate my mind. It's something that I want to learn. It's a goal of mine in my life. Maybe you don't have that same passion for Italy like I do, but you could instead replace TikTok scrolling with walking on your walking pad, right? Um, you could replace TikTok scrolling with just turning the TV off. You feel yourself getting bored and you know that that's the cue. Your routine could then be turn the TV off and play cribbage with your partner, right? Um, so this is the fundamental understanding of the science of habits and the habit loop. Cue, routine, reward, okay? Try thinking about your day right now See if you can identify any habit loops that you're currently stuck in. Something that happens and it triggers something maybe good or bad. So it can be a good habit, it can be a bad habit. And then share them in the comments if you would like. Okay, so furthermore, the author goes on to explain the idea of what he calls small wins and habit stacking. So we'll move on from this. Small wins and habit stacking. Both of these topics have stuck with me since I read them. Um, so do you know what a small win is? It's pretty self-explanatory, um, but a small win is a realistic, almost overly easy thing to do daily. So a small win can be like making your bed in the morning. A small win can be um, making sure you say, good morning, how did you sleep right when you wake up? Um, a small win can be putting on regular clothes after you get out of bed instead of staying in your pajamas all day. I'm super guilty of that one. <laughs> But he it clearly explains that making these big, gigantic goals, so things like think New Year's resolutions, you know those like huge, unrealistic goals we set for ourselves at the top of every year? Um, those are a great way to feel really crappy about yourself. Um, telling yourself tomorrow you're going to start going to the gym for 60 minutes a day is a great way to ensure failing yourself and letting yourself down, right? Instead, he talks about this story of this woman who wanted to get into working out into doing a healthier lifestyle, but she set a goal for herself to go to the gym every day. But like that was her goal, literally to go to the gym, to walk into the gym. And once she walks in, she can walk back out. She's checking off that goal. So her goal started so small that it was actually maintainable, realistic for her. If she could drive to the gym every morning, walk in and walk back out to her car and do that for long enough, then she could move on to adding on to that habit. Because now she's already used to going to the gym. Now she can go to the gym every day because she's been doing that now for two weeks consistently. And now she's adding in walking on the treadmill for 10 minutes, something little, right? We don't need to say from zero to working out for an hour every day. So it just makes it a lot more realistic. With each small win, that gives her confidence in herself and her ability to change and reinforce her new habit loop. So it's making it easier for her to stick to that new behavior over time. That makes sense? Because after all, it's not really the goal that we're really seeking. It's never really that end point that we're seeking. It's the consistency and promise that you make to yourself that really matters. So you ask yourself, do you see things through or do you tend to quit early? Now that's a deep question and it can be a hard question to like look in the mirror and answer. Um, and it's more of a rhetorical question. You don't need to answer in the comments, but do you see things through or do you tend to quit early? And that could be because you're expecting too much too soon, right? You need to make your habits or goals a little bit smaller, a little bit manageable, more manageable so that you can actually capture them, right? So in addition to small wins, the author in this book brings up this just genius technique called habit stacking. So habit stacking, I have it written down here. Habit stacking is an awesome technique where you add a new goal or habit onto the tail end of something that's already really cemented in your life. For example, I want to pick up my outfit the night before because I have decision paralysis in the morning. I'm not naturally a morning person and it just takes me forever to figure out what I want to wear, right? I can't decide. So 
what do I do? I have to think to myself, what do I do already every single night without fail, without thinking? I brush my teeth. I brush my teeth every single night. So I can have it stack those two things together. When I brush my teeth, I'll think in my head, what's the weather going to be tomorrow? What kind of an outfit do I want to wear? Do I want to wear a dress, shorts, whatever it is? And then once I'm done brushing my teeth, I'll go to my closet and pick out the outfit. Now that I have habit stacked, I have made my mornings less painful and it was very easy to implement because I'm just going to stack it right behind something that I already do, a trigger, brushing my teeth, that I already do really naturally every single night. Um, here's another. An existing habit is that I eat lunch every day. I already do that. I don't really have to think about it. I'm hungry. I eat lunch. So that's my cue but I want to be consistent on taking my greens. I wanna see what benefits I find in myself if I take my greens daily for 90 days. So now I've habit stacked those two things together. Every day with lunch, I always drink my greens. True story. So that way it's really easy for me now to complete my goal of drinking my greens for 90 days consistently, right? Because I'm gonna eat lunch every day no matter what. Now my greens are my drink that go with lunch. And it's as simple as that. And that's a really great way to implement a new habit into your life or something that you wanna do is giving it a place and picking a cue that you really already do um, in your day naturally. A habit like consistently taking a healthcare supplement um, are habits that have ripple effects that lead to positive changes in all other areas of your life. Um, so a habit that has a ripple effect like that is what the author would call a keystone habit. Keystone habits are the most important ones of all. So taking your supplements daily will lead you to better eating habits, increased energy, healthier lifestyle, cutting down on snacking, looking better in your clothes, clearer, more radiant skin. So when trying to create a new habit, it's always smart to consider starting with a keystone habit something that can positively affect a bunch of areas of your life. So taking our supplements, promoting you, that actually is a really solid keystone habit that we can kind of implement in our own lives, but also that we're sharing with others. So if you can think in the comments of any like positive keystone habit that you could implement um, that would cause a ripple effect across your life, please write it down. Let me know. Um, I have like a little list of some that I thought of. So like you could, a keystone habit could be going live every Monday. Mondays are your live day. Um, a, a keystone habit could be learning a new language, learning a new instrument, learning a new skill. That would cause a ripple effect in your whole life. Reading 15 minutes a day. So there's lots and lots of really other good ideas. And I love that so many of you are saying that you've read some of these books and it's like coming back to you. That makes me so happy. My husband, we both have read these. And so when I was practicing on him, he's like, oh yeah, like that it's all coming back to me now so hopefully it's if you haven't read it you guys it's so good um and if you have read it like I'm glad that this is proving to be somewhat interesting <laughs> so the big takeaways you guys from this book power of habit is understanding the habit cycle so cue routine reward cue routine reward on repeat um understanding that small wins are small attainable goals that help you build confidence in your ability to change so when you realize you can keep a promise that you made to yourself, it builds confidence in yourself. And being able to um, use the trick of habit stacking, you can easily implement change into your day to day by just kind of tacking something on to something you already do really naturally in the day. So book number one. Book number two is one of my favorites, you guys. It's, if you haven't read Atomic Habits, it's prime day still, I believe. Order this ASAP. But um, we've talked about the science behind habits and habit formation, but let's dive into why habits are so powerful. So this book is called Atomic Habits, and it's easily one of my favorite reads of all time. All time, for real. I'm not going to try to hype it up too much, but it's my favorite of all time. <laughs> so in Atomic Habits, James Clear explains that habits are basically a compound interest of self improvement. So in other words, small changes consistently applied lead to rem remarkable results. So small changes consistently applied 
lead to remarkable results over time. Atomic habits is quite, quite literally means small incremental changes. So the building block of life is an atom, right? The building block to success is healthy, consistent habits, okay? Atomic habits. So um, let me switch this out to my little atomic habits is a tiny change that compounds over time. So these tiny changes will compound over time to produce remarkable results. So he emphasizes that significant changes often result from a bunch of small habits that are practiced consistently day in and day out without fail. So by breaking habits down into small manageable steps and focusing on making improvements just 1% each day, 1% improvement each day, you can achieve significant progress over time. So this approach shifts the focus from like those drastic transformations to sustainable long-term growth. Again, the idea of not setting a goal so far out of reach that it's hard for you to do every day. Like if I personally made a goal to go live every day, I would fail myself. Not because it's impossible and not because other people don't do it themselves, but I go live once a month, maybe twice a month, very consistently for the past four or five years, I go live once a month. So for me to say, I'm gonna go live every single day, I'm lying to myself. But what I could do is I could say, you know what, I'm gonna go live every other week. And I'm gonna pick a day and I'm gonna start going live every other week. If my goal, my end goal is gonna to be to go live every single day, I could start with that. And then once I've proven to myself that I could do that every other week, then maybe I go once a week, maybe I go every other day, and then maybe I build up to every single day. Or another example that I know is common in our field of work is maybe you wanna get better at like team building. So an atomic habit would say, instead of setting an unrealistic goal, depending on where you're at, of adding a new team member every day, when right now maybe you're seeing a new team member once a month, um, to set a goal of, why don't I try to get a new team member every single week? And once I've hit that goal and I've maintained that goal long enough, then I can up my goal and make it realistic, make it attainable, give yourself a small win, right? Not a big letdown. We want small wins, not big letdowns, okay? So another example, my husband and I do real estate together. It's another thing we do. Love art, I have my art business, but we also do real estate, which has been kind of our main focus for the past couple of years. So we started by flipping a house and then we purchased a duplex that we rent out long-term. And now the third thing we've done is we purchased an Airbnb property. And our Airbnb property is about two and a half hours south from us. And it is um, in a really small, adorable little town. It's like a little um, Hallmark town is what I always say, Hallmark movie town. Um, and the problem is, is this house, this Airbnb that we bought is gigantic and it needs a gigantic amount of work. So it's 10 bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, two full kitchens, lots of space in between, and everything you guys needs pretty much like a gut. It's stuck in the 60s. So when we bought it, um, kitchen and or kitchen carpet in the kitchens, shag carpet everywhere, uh, mint green and peach colored paint walls, right? It's fully 60s. Um, which is a vibe if it wasn't like old crusty 60s, like it's authentic, hasn't been maintained over the years, 60s. So um, it needs a lot of work and uh, it could be very daunting to think about the amount of work that actually needs to go into this property. Um, I could easily go nuts and get very overwhelmed with the endless list of improvements that our 10 bedroom Airbnb needs. But after reading Atomic Habits, you guys, it clicked. The light, it was a light bulb moment. We said, if we can make a 1% improvement month after month after month, we can not only keep our sanity, which is half the battle, but over time we can see our property become as cute as we dream of it being in our heads. So 
We do all the renovations ourselves. So setting these manageable little goals that we feel like we can actually achieve has given us confidence and it's also made it sustainable. It's a sustainable promise that we've made to ourselves. Um, so this will be our fourth year. We're in our fourth season of running it and we rent it out. We rent it out as is. So there's rooms that are renovated and rooms that are not and it's fine. But um, so this is our fourth year. We've renovated, renovated both kitchens. Um, we've painted the fence. We put in new railings on the patio. We replaced the shag carpet with hardwood. Um, we painted and wallpapered all of the top floor bedrooms. Um, and to say that is, well, trust me, there's many more projects that can be done, but I could have never imagined getting all of that done and where we're at now. But we set our sights on small projects one at a time. That 1% improvement month after month. So we didn't think about that whole end of like what it's gonna be like when it's all finished, but just what's the next project we can do to create that 1% change. So another good analogy from this book about the 1% rule is more of like a negative take on the 1%. So let's take the analogy of an airplane, okay? An airplane is in San Francisco and we're taking off to go to New York, okay? If that pilot starts his route and he's even one degree off his route, we're not gonna land in New York. That one degree difference over all of those miles and we're landing in Miami, which hey, hopefully we're all landing in Miami in a couple of months for that cruise. So maybe it's not a bad thing, but do you see the difference of that one degree over that whole flight path? Whether it's a good or bad difference, it could be either one, right? That one degree difference doesn't feel like a big problem at the beginning of the flight, but after many, many miles, it's clear that that small change in direction has led everyone to a completely different destination. Again, could be for better, could be for the worse, but something to keep in mind, okay? So beyond making goals bite-sized, what else does he recommend? He explains that habits should be four things. Habits should be obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying, okay? If you want them to stick, if you want them to stay implemented in your life, they should be these four things. So obvious, the cue of your habit has to be something you already do every single day without fail. Making your bed, brushing your teeth, eating lunch. These are obvious benchmarks that will trigger your brain to implement whatever new habit you're working on. The habit should be attractive. You wanna make your, your habit appear very attractive. It needs to align with your values and your identity. It has to be true to you and to who you are. So if I told you guys, I need you to do an Italian lesson every single day for a year, you're probably not that interested. You're probably not gonna achieve that goal, right? That's not something that's maybe true to you and to what you have as a long-term goal. The habits you choose to enrich your life should be unique and personal to your interests and your goals. So it's gonna be different for everyone. Your habits should be easy. Um, so simplify your habits by breaking them down into small steps, reducing friction. Don't go nuts. Start small. I always like to say when you think your goal is small enough, divide it in half again. So make it so easy to start that it's almost laughable, right? Give yourself easy and attainable wins. And your goal last should be satisfying. Provide a reward, reinforce the habit with immediate gratification. An arrangement I have with my husband, Jake, is if I drink my greens with my lunch, he does the dishes. Instantly satisfying, okay? <laughs> I'm happy with that. Um, I also have a goal if I post um, on my Like to Know It app for a year straight, so every single day for one year, then I get to get a professional massage, which is like my favorite thing in the world. So I think I'm on like day 100 and something, 180 or something. So I'm going to get that massage. Trust, trust me on that one. But so that one maybe isn't instantly satisfying, but it's something that I want bad enough. It's going to keep me motivated. So make sure that your goals are satisfying, right? So the big takeaway from Atomic Habits 
is how small changes can lead to significant improvements in your life over time. Think the airplane analogy, right? Pick an area to better in your life 1% every day will lead to a 365% increase or change or improvement over a year. 1% every day will lead to 365% improvement, right? If you do it consistently every day. So your habits should be obvious, they should be attractive, they should be easy and satisfying. And if they're giving you trouble, start smaller. Cut it in half and start smaller. Okay, so that's my second book, you guys. My last one is Think Like a Monk. Jenny said she hadn't read that one yet. Let me know if you guys have um, read Think Like a Monk. We are not, I'm not reading it, but we're listening to it on audiobook, which speaking of habits is a habit that we implemented on our drives down to our Airbnb. It's a two and a half hour drive one way. So instead of listening to the annoying radio, which you guys know, it like plays the same five songs on loop, drives me nuts after long enough. We have started listening to nonfiction audiobooks, which has been kind of a cool thing for both of us to relate to each other with. So the book we're listening to is Jay Shetty's Think Like a Monk, which emphasizes the importance of mindfulness and intentionality on our habits. So the book, in the book, he discusses all the ways in which his life changed by living and practicing as a monk. So by aligning our habits with our values and goals, we not only improve ourselves, but we inspire those around us. All of us, actually all of you, all undoubtedly already are an inspiration for positivity and health um, to your friends and family. I guarantee that they look, you have people that look up to you, that you're role models, and that feeling that you give people is so contagious. That's why you're, you know, in this line of work. Um, so to kind of build off of that, these are just three themes from the book um, that he kind of explains as being really important and um, something he learned in his journey being a monk, which I found very, very fascinating. So the first theme, these are his themes and think like a monk, um, but the first theme is purpose and meaning in life. So he emphasized the importance of discovering and living with purpose. He encourages readers to align their actions and habits with different, with deeper values and goals. So understanding your purpose, you can make intentional choices that lead to a more fulfilling and meaningful life. Sounds easy, right? So he teaches that habits formed with a clear sense of purpose are more likely to stick and they're more likely to bring lasting satisfaction. So I don't think you need to put pressure on yourself and necessarily like seek out this deep, profound meaning of life. Um, but it could be as simple as knowing that you care about animals and you want to somehow incorporate raising money for your local animal shelter into your affiliate work, right? Whatever might be true to you. What can you incorporate in your business that will make it feel really meaningful to you? So for me, <laughs> I love old people. I love our elderly population. Um, if I see like an old person out in the wild, like my heart melts. Or if I see like a grandpa eating alone at a restaurant, like my day is ruined and I'm like an emotional mess for the rest of the day. Okay, that's a fact about me. So my painting business, I take all of my sample paintings. So I'm painting this one for a class tonight. Okay, it's a little like starry night thing. I take all my sample paintings and I'll paint one tonight too during the class. I take all of these once I've gathered a few hundred, which they, they definitely accumulate over time. And I take all of the paintings and we donate them to a local nursing home. It has been the most rewarding thing and made my business so much enriched because we get to set up like a little exhibition for these residents and they come in, they pick their favorite painting and then the uh, workers at the care center will hang it in their room later after everything's said and done. But it's been such a fulfilling thing just because it enriches the life of lonely elderly in my community. So it's enriched my business, it's enriched my purpose. Um, so what's authentic to you is gonna be different than what's authentic to me, but it does help if you wanna like make a list in your phone Write down some of the things that you care about. So like, do you care about dogs? 
Do you have a soft spot and can relate to single mothers, elderly, weight loss, hockey? I put that one on there for my husband. <laughs> He's obsessed with hockey. Um, I don't know. Do you guys see that background? Okay. Fireworks just went off. We love it. Hockey and fireworks went off. So I'll, I don't know if Jake's behind these controls or what, but um, fine art, yoga, you guys get the point. So how can your unique passions feed into bettering your community, right? So how can you bring that into, into your work? Um, the second theme is mindfulness and self-awareness. So uh, central to the teachings of a monk is observing one's thoughts, emotions, and behaviors without judgment. So through mind, which is easier said than done, but through mindfulness, individuals can gain, gain clarity on their habits, motivations, and impacts on their actions, on themselves, and on others. He suggests, and cultiv he suggests that cultivating mindfulness helps us to identify and change habits into constructive ones that will better support our personal growth and well-being. So this one's a hard one, but what are some habits that you're guilty of doing that you know are not bettering your life or your business? So what are some things that are hindering you in the day to day? I don't know about you, but this question is like easy for me, you guys. I have so many habits that I know are hindering me every single day. You, I already told you I'm guilty about TikTok, right? But in general, the amount of times I reach for my phone, I'm so guilty of that and I know it's not bettering anything in my life. Um, I have a habit of sleeping in. I'm a night owl, so I have a habit of sleeping in or even just laying awake for hours in the morning in bed. Like Getting out of bed is a real task for me in the morning. Um, I have a habit of snacking. I love a good snack. All hours of the day, I love to ruin my appetite before a meal. <laughs> That's just who I am. For my mom, her bad habit is Diet Coke. She drinks like two to three Diet Cokes a day and it drives me nuts. Um, but I get on her about that bad habit so often when I'm guilty of so many things myself, right? So what are things you can become self-aware of, swap out for healthier habits? What are some things you've been letting slide for far too long? Um, I asked my husband that one. He said that his is busy work. Like sometimes he feels like he's being productive, but he's actually just doing busy work. Things that aren't actually moving the needle for him at all, but just he feels like he's being productive because he's being busy. So he's like, that's a bad habit that I've been like consciously, consciously working on and trying to break. Okay, so you'll have to think to yourself which ones, um, but there's so many, right? It's easy to think of those bad habits. Um, and then the last theme for the last book is dis discipline and consistency. So he emphasizes that monks are, they lead a disciplined approach to life, which involves consistent practice, commitment to personal growth. He teaches that habits are formed through those repetitive actions and that discipline plays a crucial role in maintaining positive habits. You have to be really disciplined. So by remaining disciplined, individuals can overcome challenges, they can stay focused on their goals. They can sustain meaningful habits that contribute to their overall well-being. Consistency and discipline, you guys, if bottled, I'm pretty sure would be like a trillion dollar product, right? Like if I could buy discipline um, and consistency, I would. I think everyone would. It's probably actually priceless. Um, and that's the secret sauce that successful people have that have brought them to that level in which a lot of us only dream of. But those same consistent and seemingly perfect people and influencers all started somewhere small, right? So I joined you in March of this year, a few months ago, um, after being on a brand trip in Mexico in February. So um, I was on a brand trip with some people that I absolutely look up to and admire. So shout out to like Esmia, Courtney Swan, Courtney Spencer, Kaylee Rogers, all the other girls on that trip, like some really impactful people in our space. Um, they introduced me to you. And it was then that I said to myself, if I can emulate even a small fraction of the success that these women and these powerful entrepreneurs possess, then I myself can reach new goals. 
I told myself if I learned from them and incorporated new habits that I could learn to be successful like them. So it's important to remember everyone had a beginning, everyone had a day one, everyone had a day one for a particular habit that they now seem to do second nature, right? Everyone is so guilty of looking at their favorite influencers with their perfect content that seems to flow out from them day after day after day effortlessly, right? I'm so guilty of that. I look at them and I'm like, oh, they make it look so easy. I trick myself into thinking it comes easy for them. When in reality, we all know that a lot of discipline and a lot of consistency is the only thing that has taken them to that stage of the game. So comparison is the thief of all joy. We know that. We know that with social media, but realizing that we're all at a different day of the same habit is so important to remember. Some of us are years down the road on that particular habit, and some of us are just starting out. But it's the same recipe of habits that will all bring us to a successful, meaningful, fulfilling life and business. So the main takeaway from Think Like a Monk is to encourage yourself to cultivate purpose, mindfulness, and discipline. These practices will guide us towards greater fulfillment and personal development. So anyways, you guys, that's kind of my talk. In conclusion, um, today's talk about habits. How do we apply this knowledge to our work? Why is this relevant to us? So imagine if we could not only sell supplements, but also guide our customers in creating habits that complement their health journey. So we could provide value beyond the product, offering tips on integrating supplements into their daily routine or habit stacking, encouraging healthy eating. We could suggest great books for them, um, promote regular exercise. We then become their trusted partner in their wellness journey. So by building those good habits ourselves, we lead by example. And we all know people are drawn to authenticity and positivity. So if we embody these habits, we inspire others to follow suit. And just imagine the ripple effect that could have. We would then be creating happier families, which would then create happier and healthier communities and would give us in return a stronger business and purpose and fulfillment. So now building habits isn't always easy. We know that it takes time, effort, a sprinkle of grace. Remember, it's not about perfection, but progress. 1% better every day. Celebrate small wins because each step forward is a step towards a healthier, happier you. So you guys, in conclusion, we'll embrace the lessons from these three amazing books. Please, you guys, write in the comments if you have any book recommendations for me. I'm all ears. Um, let's build and empower ourselves with these healthy habits. Cheers to creating a ripple effect that will extend far beyond our little circle, you guys. <laughs>